Hi. Today we're going to talk about non-conservative forces and how they fit into the law of conservation of energy. Law of conservation energy is the the big law. The last video that we had was the uh, conservation of mechanical energy. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, so the law of conservation energy says that the potential energies plus the kinetic energy plus the internal energy is a constant. And internal energy is another name for thermal energy or the energy due to its temperature. Okay, so the changes in those energies add up to zero. If potential energy goes up, kinetic energy and thermal energy must go down, or at least one of them must go down, and so on. So mechanical energy may be converted to and from heat. Uh, in your car, it's converted from heat and sometimes to heat, uh, different parts. The engine uses heat to produce mechanical energy, uh, friction, uh, takes mechanical energy and turns it into heat. So, work done by non-conservative forces. So, the net work done is equal to the work done by the conservative forces, gravities and springs, and the work done by non-conservative forces, friction and air resistance are the two main ones that we'll use. So the network is done by the conservative and non-conservative forces together. And the potential energy is related only to the conservative forces. Okay, conservative, uh, the work done by conservative forces causes the negative change in potential energy. So if you do positive work, your potential energy goes down. If your conservative force does negative work, your potential energy goes up. And the network changes the kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is related to the net force, which is the work energy theorem. So the change in kinetic energy is uh, equal to the uh, negative of the change in potential energies plus all the work done by non-conservative forces. And that's found just by substituting uh, delta K in for uh, work net and minus delta U in for work conservative. So the non-conservative work is equal to the changes in potential and kinetic energy. Okay, so the change in energy due to the non-conservative forces. Okay, uh, non-conservative forces change mechanical energy. If that non-conservative work is negative, as it most often is, except when we're talking about engines and those sorts of things, the mechanical energy of the system will drop. Okay, so here's your multiple choice question. Welcome back. So here's an example. We have a 72 kilogram surfer starting with the speed of 1.3 meters per second and then during the course of their their ride, they drop through a height of 1.7 meters, and at that point, after they've dropped that distance, uh, they have a speed of 8.2 meters per second. How much non-conservative work was done on the surfer by all the non-conservative forces? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I like to draw a diagram, and it's just kind of a block diagram. So my surfer starts up here and that surfer at this point has energy and it has gravitational potential energy it has kinetic energy okay when it gets down here it may still have some potential energy it may have more or less kinetic energy and there was some non-conservative work done, possibly. Okay, if there was a spring, we would add the spring potential energy in there as well on both sides. So, according to the law of conservation of energy, the energy that we have at the beginning
is equal to the energy that we have at the end. And I'm going to prime these to show that it's the after condition. Okay, so now it's just a matter of plugging in the information that we have. So, at the top, we have a 72 kilogram surfer. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And the initial height is 1.75 meters plus their kinetic energy, one half times the mass, 72, times the initial speed, which is 1.3. And that's equal to the potential energy that they have at the end. I'm going to assume that h equals 0 at the bottom. So we have no more potential energy. 1 half m, uh, I can substitute the number in, 72 is the mass, times the final speed squared, 8.2, plus any non-conservative work that was done during that journey. So we're just going to solve for uh, the non-conservative work using algebra. So the non-conservative work is equal to all of this minus the kinetic energy that we had at the end. Okay, so 72 times 9.8 times 1.75 plus 1 half times 72 times 1.3 squared minus 1 half times 72 times 8.2 squared. I could have factored out the 72, um, but no real need here. Let's go ahead and pull up the handy dandy calculator and see what it says. So the non-conservative work is 72, well I guess I have to turn that on first. So 72 times 9.8 times 1.75 plus 0.5 times 72 times 1.3 squared minus 0.5 times 72 times 8.2 squared. And that gives us a non-conservative work of negative 1,125 joules. So uh, friction, air resistance, uh, water resistance uh, added up to a non-conservative work of 1,125 joules. So if that wasn't there, the surfer would have been going much faster at the bottom of the wave. Okay, next up, uh, we have a 2,000 kilograms car starting from rest and coasting down a uh, five meter long driveway that's sloped at an angle of 20 degrees. If an average friction force of 4,000 newtons impedes the motion of the car, find the speed of the car at the bottom of the driveway. Okay, so let's just go ahead and draw a diagram. So we have our car, starts out up here. It has a friction force of 4,000 newtons holding it up. Okay, and there is, it's inclined at an angle of 20 degrees, and we want to find out the speed of the car at the bottom. Okay, so there are some other forces going on. Uh, there's the force of gravity, 
and uh, there's normal force and that's it. Those are the only forces working on this car. In fact, normal force isn't doing any work and only the portion of the gravitational force that is down the plane is doing work. Okay, so let's start out by um, finding out what the gravitational force is that's actually pushing the car down the plane. So it's the component of the weight that is opposite the angle of 20 degrees. So that would be mg sine 20 is the force of gravity that is along the plane. Okay, so when gravity does work, it will do uh, work using this amount of force. So, now let's talk energy. We have uh, energy at the top that's composed of gravitational potential energy, plus if it was moving at all it would have kinetic energy. If there was a spring in there someplace it would have spring potential energy. And then at the ending condition it would possibly, depending upon where we picked zero, have gravitational potential energy. It might still have some kinetic energy. If there was a spring involved, it might have spring potential energy. And if there was any non-conservative forces acting, it would have some amount of work that was done by non-conservative forces. Okay, for our problem, at the beginning, it's not moving. There's no springs. At the bottom, I'm going to assume that's at a height of zero. Okay, for kinetic energy, well, we're looking for the speed at the bottom, so that's what we're looking for. And there's no springs involved. And we do have some work that was done by uh, friction. So let's go ahead and put this all together. So we have MGH. So uh, we need to know the change in height. Okay. Well, the change in height is actually the distance, 5 meters, times the sine of 20 degrees and I have that here okay so the change in height is going to be um, well let's do mg and the change in height is going to be the length 5 times the sine of 20 degrees and let's go ahead and just substitute some numbers in 2,000 times 9.8 times 5 times the sine of 20. Okay, no kinetic energy, no spring energy. At the bottom, we have no potential energy. We uh, think it was rolling down, so that's 1 half times 2,000. times v squared, that's what we're looking for, the final speed, plus non-conservative work. Well, the non-conservative work is the force of friction, 4,000, and the displacement was 5 meters, and the direction, so the force is up, the displacement is down, so that's times a, a cosine of 180 degrees which is negative 1. Okay so now it's just a matter of doing algebra to isolate V. Okay so let's go ahead and solve that out. Okay, so now let's pull up the calculator and come up with a calculation, see what we come up with. 
the top. 2,000 times 9.8 times 5 times sine of 20 plus 2,000. Close that parentheses. Divide by 1,000. Close the square root parentheses, and that ends up with 5.95 meters per second. Wow, does that make sense? And here's your free response. Good luck. We'll see you next time.